nine-year TV deal with ESPN and Turner worth $24 billion. Kobe Bryant tweeted, suggesting that the league and its owners make plenty of money, so why not the players? Well, Tuesday after practice, he said the following. Listen, business is business. I think people get that confused very easily in understanding that players should take substantially less than their market value in order to win championships. To be specific, his tweet is, players are encouraged per new CBA to take less to win or risk being called selfish, ungrateful, while NBA TV deal goes up by a billion dollars. Hashtag the biz. Uh, Skip, do you agree with what Kobe Bryant's saying? I do not agree, and Fab, just for your background, this man and I have gone back and forth about this issue, and mm -hmm. it's possible that Kobe's comment was aimed at my position on this. It's possible. So I'll restate my position about Kobe Bryant. Kobe, do you want to be paid what you're worth right now as a box office attraction at age 36, or do you want to win? Do you want to take one for the team to improve your cap position and your flexibility to add players and pieces around you the way Dirk has done in Dallas? This year, Dirk will make $8 million. Gladly, he took $8 million this year. Tim Duncan in San Antonio this year will make $10 million to give their, chance, their team's chances to build better around them than the Lakers have been able to build around Kobe Bryant. Kobe at age 36 will be in his 19th year this year making 23.5 million dollars now is he worth 23.5 as as this man always says is, is a box office attraction in LA you better he's worth three times that much four times that much but there's still a thing called a salary cap right. that, that Kobe can't talk his way out of because it's not going away it's a fact of NBA life that your team is somewhat restricted in the pieces they can add around Kobe Bryant, who has made in his career already $280 million in salary alone. That, that's a lot of salary. Dirk's already made $204 million, and Tim has made two twenty-five. So they just said, we're good. We made right. you know, we, we, we got our money in our bank, and, and we're good. We'll just take, by, by superstar standards, pittances. Th those are just like cookie jar salaries, you know, to me. But Kobe says, no, I, I want the, the max. I want 23.5 this year, and I want 25 million next year at age 37 in his 20th year. Again, worth it at the, at the gate and all, as a TV attraction, not worth it against the cap. I don't know. It's a touchy subject because there's no cap for to say what owners can do to make money for the team. Nope. And, and, you know, as they continue to make more money, then players are supposed to take less money or... Uh, be looked at in a certain way if they're trying to get more money. So it's a, it's a, I understand your point because it is a, a, a team sport and, you know, like you said, after you've made so much money, you know, you can take a cut and say, you know, I would like to build a team here. Um, but in Kobe's, in Kobe's place, what is he building a team for for his last two years? He could do that or he could say, yeah, this is probably my last two years. Let me get my money in you know, still do what I do at the same but time. But do you think he's saying, I'd rather take my money and not win? Because he feels that's how people are portrayed. No, I, I think, he, I mean, that's how, because the players' salaries are widely talked about. I don't think any of the ownership numbers and, you know, a deal, things like this get out, but it don't be like barbershop talk, you know what I'm saying? It's just a, it's a quick conversation. But the players' salaries, that's always conversation, you know what I'm saying? And I think that... The, like he's saying, the players get the bad end of the stick because they always, it looks selfish if they want more money or they don't take a pay cut, but the owners are not taking any cuts or, as well. So it's two-sided to me. Skip Bayless and I adamantly disagree on this issue because of the perspective which we come from. Mm -hmm. Skip explained his, I'll explain mine. Kobe Bryant, first of all, doesn't believe he's going to lose when he's on the court. He believes he's going to win. That's number one. Number two, Kobe Bryant isn't of the mindset that, you know, he snatched all the money he could get. You just acknowledged that he's worth three, four times as much as because he he's is. box office, which yeah. means that he could have gotten more out of the Lakers. As far as he's concerned, he did take a pay cut. Mm. So now that we've gotten that issue out of the way, let's understand what, Co what Kobe Bryant's bigger issue is. If Dr. Buss, and I've said this to you on many occasions, if Dr. Buss were alive 
You think Dr. Buss could have convinced Kobe to take 15 to 20 million? Yes, he could have. But Jim Buss ain't Dr. Buss. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is, is that when you have marquee guys in this league, think about this. Dirk Nowitzki has been a part of the Dallas Mavericks. He was there when they stunk. He watched Mark Cuban make this franchise relevant and build a championship team. As a result, you asking Dirk Nowitzki to make a sacrifice is something that he could conceive because he is set. He is in a place that he wants to be at. He is revered. He's going to be a Dallas Maverick for life. And far beyond his playing days, he's going to have a connection to that franchise and beyond that could facilitate him doing some things. We don't know what kind of relationship uh, uh, Mark Cuban has facilitated with folks in Germany, his homeland, where it could it could benefit Dirk Nowitzki down the road beyond his playing days. That's a point. No, but you, I'm just, you I'm, can't do that against the salary. No, no, no you can't do that against well, the salary. I guess what I'm trying to say to you is that him making that sacrifice. There's a bigger picture. But when uh, circumventing uh, well, the listen, cap, well, you know, whatever. Okay, they can sit there and deny okay. it all they want all right, to. Right. Andre Kirilenko, he's from Russia. Mikhail Prokhorov owned the Nets, still mm -hmm. owns the Nets, even though he's trying to sell. He comes to the Brooklyn Nets for considerably left. Why? Because Mikhail Prokhorov is Russian and I'm Russian, so I want to do this for my patriot. Really? Maybe. Right, whatever. <laughs> the point that I'm trying to make to you, who knows what's going back on in Russia, okay? Right. When you look at Tim Duncan, Here's the San Antonio Spurs. You've got five championships now for this organization, led by the great Greg Popovich, a great owner in Peter Holt. When they come to you and ask you to take to, to take a bit less, number one, you're looking at the credentials that they bring to the table because mm -hmm. of what they're asking you to sacrifice for, combined to what they gave you in the past, with you understanding that as you got older, they could have left you high and dry. They could have failed to build a team around you. They didn't do all of those things. Kobe Bryant is Kobe Bryant. He's a five-time champion. This is what he brings to the table. He's everything to L.A., and he's saying, why y'all looking at me? I delivered on my end of the bargain. His press conference last year, Skip said, oh, no, don't talk to me about rebuilding. He said, you, you want to hold the players accountable? What about you as an executive? What about you as an owner? You have a mandate. This is what you got to work around. Find a way to work around it because you would be telling the players the same thing. And he's looking at Joe Public, and he's saying, Pay attention to all of that, not just, just the, the players, players, because it does. it's not just about the players. It's about them, too. And everybody doesn't deserve the max, and everybody doesn't get the max. And there's a lot of teams with a lot of players that don't have max players, rather, that they're winning. How come the Lakers can't find a way? Mm -hmm. Kobe Bryant has a right to ask that question. Mm -hmm. It's legitimate. Okay, but do you give the Lakers a shot this year? I don't give the Lakers a shot because the powers in the West are the powers in the West, but also the Lakers had enough money to go out there and get somebody other than Carlos Boozer or re-sign Swaggy P or whomever. The fact is, is that they didn't utilize it because Jim Buss is not Dr. Buss. I promise you, God is my witness. I swear this on my soul. If the great Dr. Buss is alive, there is no way that a LeBron James or Carmelo Anthony and all of these dudes are available in the free agent market I agree and he that. doesn't get one of them. He, he, he gets one of them. He would have. They didn't get it, not because of Kobe. They didn't get it because the Lakers don't hold the same stature that they once had. But they Period. did have an issue with Kobe's salary and you said that Dr. Buss would have made sure that Kobe had taken less, less enough that they could have added with no problem. Listen, listen, second. here's the bottom line. To get from one to go from one team, the new salary cap rules stipulate that you could sign for five years at an exorbitant amount of dollars. But if you go for somewhere else, it's a four year deal. The Lakers had the four year max to offer at ninety six million dollars. They had that to get a team to get somebody to come from another team to them. The max dollars mm -hmm. that were available, they had it available. Now, I can understand if, you know, the Lakers didn't have, if Carmelo wanted $130 million mm -hmm. and the Lakers didn't, ha didn't have the money, then no. you'd make a different argument. But right. the rules stipulate no, that whatever the max was, if you were going to a different team, the Lakers had enough money for one max player to come and play with Kobe Bryant. You couldn't pull it off. And then yep. people want to point the okay. finger at Kobe. Well, people may not want to play with him. Really? Maybe, maybe so. Okay. He's a five-time champion. You don't want to play with him, that's your problem. Okay, Fab makes a deeper point here. You started off by saying the owners have it a lot better than the players, and they do. Mm. This is LeBron James' quest here. Mm -hmm. They have it much better. That's why they're the owners to start with. Right. But there's this thing called collective bargaining negotiation. It's gonna, it, it'll come around again, and at some point,
the players need to c c need to take a stand exactly. here, right? See, mm -hmm. I can't well. believe y'all looking at me and y'all don't know where I'm going. Come on now, <laughs> Skip Bayless, Kobe, LeBron, mm -hmm. Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, Derrick Rose, Chris Paul, cats like that. Nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. True that. But the league is 450 players strong. At least 400 of them. You're talking about dudes, Skip, that they're not getting this money anywhere else and they're not set for life. And you're asking for young brothers to stand tall mm -hmm. in unison against millionaires and billionaires who not only have an exorbitant amount of dollars and cut the check mm -hmm. instead of cash them, but they also make deals with their television partners that ensure that, ensure that they will still be paid in the event of a lockout. So in other words, when these players are locked out by the owners and the players are not getting paid, the owners are still, still getting, getting their money on top of the money they already have. Yep. That's a lot to ask for players to sit up there and stand strong, don't fold, don't bend, or anything like that. Don't get me wrong, sometimes some moments they could be a little stronger. There are other moments where they're a little bit too strong and hardcore about issues that dare I say may be a bit trivial or frivolous. So you got to really, really work through that minefield but in the end you've got to applaud the brothers for trying mm -hmm. because my goodness look at the odds that are stacked against them and then we're not even getting to the court of public opinion because what Kobe is alluding yeah. to what what Fab and Carrie yeah. absolutely know I'm saying is you have a joke public out there and a Susie public out there who literally look at these players and go like this. You should be grateful. grateful. Yeah. Excuse me. They have a gift yeah. that most of us don't have, which is why they're in a the position that they're in, which is why they get paid what they get paid. And to ask them to have that expectation, rather, that yep. they're supposed to just stand strong and, oh, they agreed to it with collective bargaining. It's kind of unfair because we're not taking into account the odds that are really stacked against them. Fabulous. Okay. You said something really good mm -hmm. earlier. You said it's common knowledge what players make, but we don't ever hear a barbershop talk about what the owners are doing. Yeah, I think they, you know, they, the, the players are always on the front on the front line. So, you know, what they what their salaries are, that's always a big conversation. But the owners are behind the scenes. A lot of people that common people don't even know who the owners are. So, you know, that's why it's always like that. And I think that's why the players get the short end of the stick. Because the, even in this argument, Kobe's, we have Kobe's, we don't have any owners, right. you know, comments or anything or, or voices to even put to it. You know what I'm saying? And I think just that... Just real quick, how fair is it in the music industry right now as far as artists and... Versus the label. Yeah. Well, I think that the music industry is, is changing where now as we would be the players, we kind of are becoming more independent. And I think that, um, you know, that's what I think, in a way, Kobe is trying to imply the players to do here, like stand for your rights and become more independent and know your worth as a player. And what the music industry has forced artists to do, because you can't sit and wait on your record label or, you know, them to figure out when they need to release your music. Now you have a platform like the internet and social media where you can, you know, release. Last, like what LeBron is last doing. point that I need to make about is this pointed to exactly what you just said. The music industry, in my opinion, because I don't know, but in my opinion, seems to have a clearer path towards independence. Mm -hmm. Professional athletes do not have that luxury. Mm. It is collectively yeah. bargained. Sure. Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, and all of them, they may be independent brands and independent entities, but the money that LeBron James makes outside of basketball in no way influences what he makes in basketball. Mm. This is the cap. This is what Matt's players are allowed to make. This is what was collectively bargained. You don't get more than that. We don't care how popular you are. We don't care if you're an international icon. It means nothing to us. You still fall under the purview of what we collectively bargain. The music industry does not have to worry about no. that. You are allowed to be independent if you can pull it off, if right. you got the know-how, which some of y'all do, and I'm right. proud of y'all for that. But in the end, you can't compare a professional athlete to a musician because stuff ain't collectively bargained like right. that. Dev Jam's 30th anniversary concert tomorrow at tomorrow. Barclays.